Hello guys, and welcome to another episode of MTG Steam Brewery. This is episode 13, and uh, we're going to try incorporating some modern videos. So this is our first, this is going to be the first deck tech for our first modern versus video, as we've already done one modern deck tech. And as you can see, it's not really a known deck. This is kind of a homebrew I've made and I've done really well with. So I wanted to do this for our first modern versus video. So here we go. It's a red, white, black super friends list, and to start off the Planeswalker uh, chain, we have one Gideon Jara, really good against pretty much everything but combo in the format, against control, you're becoming a 6-6, six, six, and attacking is really good, against aggro, he's just going to go up to 8, make him attack, and then start killing creatures, or keep, you know, ticking up and saving you lots of life, and with our deck, we're able to normally kill things with, like, Restoration Angels, or Block the Kitchen Finxes, just kind of get value out of them attacking him and not us, while being able to get a better board advantage, because they're attacking. And then we have one Liliana Vess, um, mainly in here for the minus two. She's going to come down minus two, go get a Gideon. If they, most people won't kill Liliana, so you get to untap, play a Gideon, plus her. She'll be out of lightning bolt range, and you'll have a Gideon to protect her. She also is able to tutor for, like, a Johnny's against Burn and Aggro. She's just kind of able to tutor up multiple times against many decks, what we really need to answer. And her plus one's also really relevant against control since we didn't want to main deck Lillian of the Veil. We, we did want to wait to mess with our opponent's hand outside of our Thought Seizes and other such cards. So we wanted a, a way to do that every turn, so that's why she's in here. And then we have two Johnny Vengeant. Really one of the best four mana Planeswalkers in Modern. Taking up, keeping something tapped down. Very relevant against, every once again, everything but combo. And then his minus two is also relevant against many decks. And then his ultimate, which actually happens quite a bit is extremely relevant, destroying all the lands. Most decks will not be able to come back from that. There are a few, but most decks won't be able to. We have one Sorn. He's mainly in here to come down in minus two after we've played, like, Lingering Souls and start, like, just swing for four to eight in the air because we've played Lingering Souls and maybe flashed it back. His plus one's very good against aggro. After, like, going Lightning Bolt, Lightning Helix, Lingering Souls into Sorn, plus one, make a dude's really good. Uh, his... His emblem's also really good against control decks, making all of our threats, even our 1-1s, one -ones, much bigger threats. And being able to spit out tokens every turn if we have nothing to do with our mana, and we have no board presence is also really good. And we have three Restoration Angels, probably one of our cards that pushes over the top in the control matchup, having the 3-4 flash flying, like making them have to do something at the end of their turn, where most of our threats won't do that, so they'll just be able to counter, untap, keep up counterspell mana for... A long portion of the game. This just kind of allows us to threaten them and ha make them use their mana so we can untap and play an another threat like a planeswalker. And so, if one Olivia, good against uh, lots of decks in modern, really pretty dead against control, very mad against combo, but against like zoo and mid range decks, especially like fish uh, and zoo, those decks mainly, she's just going to take over a game really fast if they don't find an answer to her. And she can also take over games where you're just kind of trying to grind out an advantage like against Maliripod if they can't kill her. She's going to pretty much kill them no matter what they do. So she's a she's a very solid threat. We also have two Kitchen Finks, kind of just a source to gain life. Being double wide's a bit makes it a bit harder to cast them than the rest of our spells in our deck. On turn three, but we still would definitely want access to them because they're a way to midgetate life loss. And against Zoo, being able to block, kill something, gain, and come back and gain two more lives is going to be really relevant. Against Burn, it's probably one of our best cards outside of Lightning Helix and a Johnny. Because it also threatens them, allows us to gain to gain life, get hopefully get out of burn range, and threaten them. Very efficient. Against Control Decks, it kind of it's like Path to Exile or Bust, because having to spend two spells on a Kitchen Finks, even if it's just like Lightning Bolt Electrolyze, is still really bad value for them. So, very efficient threat, and very good against pretty much everything in the format. Then we have three title scholars, uh, kind of like a fiend hunter for their hand, really solid card. Just like going turn one thought sees, turn two high dollar scholar, turn three Phyrexian Arena or Lingering Souls is going to win a lot of games, especially in a format where having their hand and answers to your cards is very relevant, and us stripping their answers is going to be a huge thing, especially when they have to kill this to get that answer back. It's kind of a really solid value card in our two drop slots, so we definitely wanted those in here. And we have... One for X and Arena, kind of our card draw, since we don't really have a ton of card draw in our deck. We definitely needed a way to 
make our deck grind out because it's going to grind out a lot of wins. That's what it's made, built to do. We just need a way to grind out against control decks, and this is kind of our card draw for that matchup. Then we have four Lingering Souls. It's really good uh, against almost everything in the format. It's just going to come down against control. It's one of our win conditions, like they need Electrolyze if they're blue, white, red, or a Sweeper for just this one card, which is really good. Uh, having Flashback also makes it really relevant. Solid against every creature matchup, making multiple blockers. And against Fish, it kind of gives us an answer to uh, Master of the Waves, which is really hard for us to answer. We only have two answers to him that aren't, uh, that are in our main deck, so this card really allows us to threaten him, as well as against Fish normally, since we don't play Islands and they have to have the Spreading Seas. Making Four Spirits is kind of just going to slow the game down to a point where we'll have plenty of time to get to our end game. And against many decks, this is actually one of our win conditions, because Four Flying Spirits is normally enough to end a game, especially when you're killing all their creatures so they can't threaten you. Swinging for four in the air that they can't block is going to swing a lot of games. And we have also three Thoughtseize, one of the best cards in Modern, like beyond a doubt, being able to just take any card from their hand in the early turns for one black mana, even at two life, is really good in most matchups. It's pretty much good against everything but Zoo and Burn. And even against Burn, it's not that bad. Because it's uh, two damage to three. And then we have one Pillar of Flame in our main deck, kind of a, our Miser's one of, it's really good when Malira Pod's popular, uh, being able to kill Mana Dorks and Kitchen Finks' Murder Strike Caps, things like that, when they're such a graveyard based deck, being able to kill them permanently, instead of having to use two spells, uh, is a really big deal, making their value creatures a little less valuable is kind of how we're going to, our best chance of beating them. We also have, in our removal, straight removal speed that can't go to the dome like Pillar Flame is... One go for throat, two terminate, just kind of catch all removal spells. They kill. Terminate does kill anything that can be targeted. Go for throat kills pretty much everything. There are a few exceptions, but having two drop removal spells is really relevant when uh, Zoo and Melira Potter, the two of the decks you have to beat. They're also really good against Splinter Twin, so that's why those are in here. We have four Lightning Helix, a really great two drop removal spell. Good in pretty much every matchup because it can, worst case scenario, like Pillar Flame, it just goes to the. Dome, but this does go deal three instead of two, and it also gains you three life, so it's a lot more relevant in a lot more matchups gaining that three life. So that's why that's in here. Then we also have four lightning bolts, w another one of the best spells in modern. One mana for three damage is probably the most efficient burn spell. Uh, being also being able to act as removal and go to the dome also gives us a lot of flexibility with it, kind of allowing us to do the same thing with like lightning helix if we get them. To a low enough life total with like Lingering Souls or Kitchen Finxes in the control matchup, we can just burn them out. So those are just really solid cards. We also have one Path to Exile. Against most decks, giving them a basic land is not going to matter. But there's also enough decks like Affinity, if they don't draw their one basic island, giving them that basic island is going to be a big deal. Against Sue, giving them another land. Even if it's like after upkeep turn two, they're still going to be able to play multiple things next turn, and you gave them a basic land. So we did want one of because it's so good, but it also does give certain matchups that are favorable for us, a lot of downside. And we have our mana base, one Vault for the Archangel, kind of just uh, our way to uh, gain life in the aggro matchups and the burn matchups uh, in some cases. It also allows our Lingering Souls tokens to just trade with pretty much everything. It makes attacking really bad for a lot of decks. That's why that's in there. We have one Tech Edge. You could easily play more if you have your if you have fetch lands. You definitely want to play more Tectonic Edges. Against Tron, Taking them off their Tron lands is a huge deal against American Control killing Colonnades, against Maliripod killing Gavney Townships. It just does a whole lot of things in a whole lot of matchups. But since I don't have my own personal fetch lands, we're only playing the one. And we have our man lands because we definitely wanted man lands that weren't Mutavolt. Since we're not really a tribal deck, we don't really want Mutavolt in here. Uh, they're just 2-2. Two -two. So we wanted, to, we did want a man land because those are vital in the control matchups. So we have Lava Claw Reaches. Uh, it becomes a 2-2 two -two and you can, for 3 mana... And then you can, has basically fire breathing except for colorless, so plus X plus so whenever you pump a mana. Really good, it can close out a lot of games very quickly. And worst case scenario, we get to animate it, block something, and then like give it a little more power so it trades with something in, a, in a certain situations. So a very solid card for our deck when we're running 25 lands and we're going to try and grind out the game. We definitely wanted a way to spend our mana efficiently. We have one Graven Cairn, just kind of to uh, filter if we don't like draw red lands or black lands. We can just filter mana to get more efficient mana. And then we have one Dragon Skull Summit, uh, our red-black check land.
Definitely one of the lands that could come in on tap, like Graven Cairn and Dragon School Summit. We have four Blood Crypt, four Sacred Foundry, two Cliff Drop Treat, just, you know, some more check lands, four Godly Shrine, and then two Isolate Chapel, and three Basics for Ghost Quarter and Path to Exile, which do see play in the format. So there is our main deck for my Red, White, Black Super Friends deck, Team Neapolitan, as I have named it. And we'll be back in one second for the sideboard. Welcome back to our sideboard. We're kind of going to get straight into it. We have another Planeswalker in our sideboard, Liliana the Veil. Against Welcome. control decks, we definitely want to have her being able to, you know, come down, making player, making them, even though we are discarding cards too. This is like plus one, a control player discarding one card, and we discard like a Lingering Souls. We're already up, getting to untap and just continue to make them discard cards is really relevant. Against aggro decks, it's kind of just another three mana. They sacrifice creature. Against, uh, a sp and especially against like the Boggles deck, we do need a way to kill their creatures since we don't have pretty much any way to kill them outside of Edict in uh, our deck. Uh, especially, like, none in our main deck, and our sideboard has answers. We have, so we really wanted Liliana to fail. We also have Sin Collector, uh, another card for control matchups. You could easily sideboard Slider Games in its spot. But this has a little more flexibility against, like, it comes in against Burn and such, being able to answer those things. But you could easily argue this being a Slaughter Games, and it's probably not even wrong. It just kind of depends on what you expect to play against and whether or not you want a Slaughter Games against the decks you expect. We also have Stony Silence, really good against Affinity and Tron. Uh, our Game 1 Tron matchup's kind of iffy, but after sideboarding with things like Stony Silence and then some of the other cyber cards we're going to show you, it's just a lot better. So we really definitely needed uh, this to improve our Tron matchup. We have Barter and Blood also for the Boggles matchup. Also good against like Merfolk and Zoo. Just four mana for the the killing two creatures. We're not really upset about sacrifice creatures in those matchups, so we're definitely gonna be happy to have this. Sowing Salt, kind of definitely for the Tron matchup. Sometimes you're going against control matchup if you just kinda wanna get aggressive. Uh -huh. You just wanna like molten rain, sowing salt, st then start playing threats because you've blown up multiple lands. And with Chewing of the Gods. One of the best sideboard cards you can have access to in Red and Modern right now when Zoo's so such a bit big deal. Affinity is also a big deal. It's also really good against Merfolk if you have if that's a thing in your meta. Just kind of comes down. Meliripod, really good against Meliripod. Exiling their creatures is a huge deal. So definitely wanted definitely one of these in our sideboard. You could easily go up to four, cutting some other sideboard cards if it's needed to for your meta. Then we have two Molten Rain. Another card for the Tron matchup, also really good in the uh, control matchup, just being able to put them behind on lands and deal damage. If they're like a Johnny, come down Helix something, you get to untap Molten Rain, blow up a land, and then deal with a Johnny. It's going to be a huge tempo swing that's put you putting you so far ahead. Then we have one Combust, kind of for the control matchups. It also can act as removal against other random decks with like white creatures, really good against fish. Just being able to kill Celestial Colonnade and then not being able to counter it is going to be a huge deal because that's one of their few ways to kill us outside of a Johnny. We have two Wear Tear. Just there are lots of artifacts and enchantments in Modern that are kind of uh, problematic we need to answer. So we definitely needed these. Bringing in straight up against Affinity, definitely. Uh, Bogles, just random matchups that artifacts and enchantments are going to be a big deal. We have two Relic of Genesis. Since we do have our graveyard, we do play Lingering Souls. We definitely don't want to play Rest in Peace because we do need access to our graveyard. But this does enough in enough matchups because we do need a way to interact with graveyards, Living In, Malira Pod, Snapcaster Mage. We wanted a way to exile graveyards. And it also draws a card to boot, so it's in there. We have one Stencil Blood Hole. Just replace Vault of the Archangel in, like, the Tron and the American Control matchups. Just, even though this isn't great against Tron... But Vault of the Archangel is also much worse against both those decks, so we definitely just wanted a land that did something in our sideboard. So that's our sideboard, and that's my homebrew. I piloted to ninth place at an SEG Modern event, pretty much kept out by tiebreakers, like a .38 percentage. Uh, very close. I was very happy to play the deck. Top four multiple FNMs, losing my, in the top four. My story's not so great. Losing in the top four. So, <laughs> there's our modern deck. We hope you enjoyed it. Please check out our Twitter, our blog. Those will be in the description. Don't remember to hit check out our uh, versus videos. So this is going to be playing against the Eternal Command deck, but mm, probably not the version you're used to. So please enjoy and have if a you great know that day.